Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in Major League Baseball in 1947 with the Brooklyn Dodgers. But it wasn't until 1955 that the Yankees had their first African-American player, Elston Howard. Now, though signed by the Yankees, he didn't actually play his first two years, 1951 and 1952, actually gave to military service just to show what a different world it was back then. I mean, you couldn't imagine a player doing something like that now. But I did come back to the Yankees in 1953 in the AAA system, but it really wasn't until 1954 when he was personally tutored by former Yankee great at the time, Bill Dickey, to be a catcher. And then finally, by 1955, he was brought up and he was on the opening day roster. I told you I wasn't lying. Now, Howard was a great hitter. The only challenge is to find him enough playing time and positions. Now, as a catcher, well, 1955, mid-50s, there was still the heyday for Yogi Berra, and he was still a fantastic hitter himself, so he really couldn't move Berra out of that position. So it was hard for Howard to find enough at-bats. Again, he would get a little left field. 1959, they tried him with that at first base, but it really isn't until 1960 that the worm saw the turn a little bit where he thought, okay, you know, Berra was still a great hitter, but maybe physically they sort of take him behind the plate a lot and put him out in the outfield, and then switch and put a little more Elson Howard behind the plate. So around the 1960s is when you start to see Elson Howard as more of the regular catcher. And once he had this job, his career really started to flourish. In fact, by 1963, he was the MVP of the league, batting 278 with 28 home runs and 85 RBIs again as a catcher, winning his first gold glove, something he would do again in 1964. And overall, a 12-time All-Star. In fact, he had an eight-year consecutive run. Now, in 1965, Howard needed surgery on his elbow. And overall, the 65 Yankee team just started having to decline. All those, those great iconic players from the 50s and early 60s all just started to get old and break down, such as Mantle and Berra and Whitey Ford and all that. And Howard was no different. And then finally, by 1967, the Yankees traded him to the Boston Red Sox of all teams and at the rivals. The only good news with that is that that 67 team went to the World Series, so at least Howard was able to experience October baseball in one last hurrah, even though in a losing effort. And then by the end of the 68 season, the Red Sox did officially release Howard, so he was kind of done of a, as a player, but his baseball life was still going to continue. Although he was done as a player, he still had a lot to offer the game. And the Yankees actually brought him back in 1969 as a first base coach. And at the time, he was the first African-American coach in the American League. And just a few years later, Frank Robinson, who we just spoke about, he was the first African-American manager for the Baltimore Orioles. In fact, in 1977, was that infamous fight in the Yankee dugout. It goes down in Yankee history. Basically, what happened was that um, a ball dropped in front of Reddy Jackson up in Fenway Park. Billy Martin was the manager at the time. He thought maybe Jackson could have gotten that ball. He was kind of hot-dogging a little bit. Again, Billy Martin wasn't too happy with Reddy Jackson initially coming into the season. So basically, Jackson was like, you know, got pissed off when Billy Martin basically yanked him out of the game after that play. Reggie goes charging in. I mean, we've all seen the image before, but it was actually Elston Howard and Yogi Berra who had to pry them to apart. So, you know, yes, Elston Howard, a great a player, of course, for the Yankees, but again, as a coach, that memorable moment in Yankee history where they had to break up Billy Martin and Reggie Jackson from killing each other. But Howard stayed with the Yankees as a coach through the 1979 season, and then finally moved out of the dugout and went up to the front office. But unfortunately, during this time in the front office, his uh, health started to decline very rapidly. He actually had a very rare heart condition that just caused rapid heart failure and he was kind of toiling maybe thinking about having surgery he didn't have the surgery and unfortunately he succumbed to the disease and died of heart failure in 1981. Now a little interesting note about Elston Howard he's actually credited with inventing the donut now not the donut you eat but the batting donut you know usually a player they put like weighted little donuts on the bat when they're in the batting circle just to swing and just so when they get to the plate the bat feels lighter and they can hit the ball easier well somehow Elston Howard's credited with inventing that. And the catcher putting up two fingers just to signal to all the players that there are two outs. Well, Elson Howe is the one who kind of started doing that. And, well, through Diaz now, it's pretty much routine in baseball. But it all traces back to Elson Howard. Although, sadly, he was gone, the Yankees did immortalize him in 1984, giving him a plaque out in Monument Park, as well as retiring his number 32. And when you look back to that era again, he has four championships, 12 all-star appearances. He was one of the guys, you know, like sort of Mantle and Yogi Berra and Whitey Ford. He was in that crew. So not only is he the first African-American player for the Yankees, he's just one of the great Yankees of all time.